this was the run we have done in our earlier session. Okay, so we had looked at reliability of EMP and TO. Okay, and I had asked you to do reliability for the other dimensions. Now, let us say we want to do exploratory factor analysis for these 10 items. Uh, we have, we know there are, there are 10 items, okay? And what we want to do is we want to compute the, uh, the dimensions or we want to look at the, uh, the factors that would be represented by these 10 items, right? So that is what we are going to do. So how do we do it? Analyze, so we'll go to analyze, okay? And then dimension reduction. Remember factor analysis is uh, one of the dimension reduction techniques. That is why in SPSS you will find it in dimension reduction and then you will see factor. Okay, so the, this kind of a window opens up and we need, we will look at the first 10 items. Right, so we will select the first 10 and we will send it to our variables list. Then we will go to descriptives. It is, it is okay, nothing much to report here. Extraction, okay. Now you see, yesterday we had talked about extraction methods, okay. And by default, it is principal components. But I had told you that is not the correct method. What you should do is principal access factoring. Okay, so that is what we are going to do. Based on number of factors to be extracted, so we are going to say there are two ways and both of these are equally right. Okay, so either you can say eigenvalues greater than one or you can say the number of factors to be extracted. So I know theoretically, because I have developed the instrument, I know theoretically that there should be three dimensions represented by these 10 items. So I can also key in this number three. Else I can simply, so I will show you the result with both these options. This maximum iterations for convergence, it is okay. Okay, we'll leave it as a default. If the software is not able to converge in 25 iterations, we can increase this number also. Then there is the scree plot. We can ask the software to plot, thus give the scree plot also. But as I was mentioning earlier, it is not a very good method of uh, identifying uh, what should be the number of factors. Then you can also ask the software to analyze any one of these. It is, it is okay. Okay. So correlation or covariance matrix doesn't matter. Continue. Then we'll go to rotation. Okay. So we'll, so there is method none. Then there is very max, very max, quartimax and equamax. These are three orthogonal rotation and direct oblimin is the uh, oblique rotation. So this delta and kappa value. So if you do promax, it will come to kappa. And these are some uh, based on uh, the items that you that you are giving. It basically is trying to fit the rotation method. So these are some default values. We don't need to. Uh, change them. So we'll leave it as direct oblimin and display rotated solution. Okay, so we'll ask the uh, rotated solution and you can also see the loading plot like I had drawn the plot that is also possible uh, in the output. Scores, so do we want to save the factor scores? No, that is not our aim currently. Our aim is to actually see what items load onto what particular factor and that is what we are trying to do here so we we'll, we don't need to uh, uh, to do anything here options 
exclude cases list wise this is missing value how do you analyze or how do you tackle missing value data missing values so list wise it means that if there is out of these 10 items if there is a missing data on even one of these 10 items then that complete data is going to be dropped from the consideration set if you say exclude cases pairwise then it will not drop the cases uh, completely rather it will because it will analyze the correlations inter item correlations so if there is some missing data then whatever pair wherever so for example if there is a missing data at emp1 then if i compute uh, EMP correlation between EMP1 and EMP2, then row number 1 will be dropped. But if I compute correlation between EMP2 and EMP3, then in this pair, there is no missing data. So this data will be retained when computing the correlation between EMP2 and EMP3. So this is called as pairwise or replace with mean. So if you have a missing data, then you can also ask the software to replace that missing data with the mean. So usually it is recommended that if you have a large sample, then excluding cases list wise is a better way of analyzing the data. So this is the default. Anyways, in this data set, I do not have any missing data. Okay, so we will keep it list wise uh, sorted by size yes we want to sort the items so whichever item loads the highest should be reported at the top and then in decreasing order of their loadings and suppress small coefficient so at this time i don't want to suppress i will show you what happens when you click on this what will be the change in the output so continue and then we will paste this in our syntax file. So this is our syntax file and I will add the comment here and I will say EFE, EFA for leadership. Right, so this is the whatever we have clicked is going to be reported here and now i am going to run this output okay now we see let us look at the result so the first thing that is reported here is called as the communalities right so how do you interpret emp1 the communality is 0.56 that means the factors explain the factors explain together 56 percent variance in the in the data similarly emp2 82 percent variance in the data is explained 63 percent variance in emp3 is explained 61.8 percent 64 the remaining is the uniqueness that means it is the um, unexplained variance which can be attributed to your uh, measurement error right so that is the uh, idea of communality now let us look at the factors factor extraction so it shows initial eigenvalues and you see the number of factors in the first run is exactly same as the number of items what does this mean it means that each factor has only one item so each item loads onto one particular factor therefore the number of factors is the same as number of items what is the variance explained by the first factor 55 percent second factor 11 percent and so on and total all of these factors together explain this much then if you look at the factor solution 
uh, after it performed the EFA, there were two broad two factors that emerged. First factor is the dominant factor, which explains 51%. And then the second one explains 8%. Together, they are explaining 59.9% variance. And then there is the rotated sum of squared. So this is the rotated solution. For rotated solution, the first factor is explaining 4.8%. That is the eigenvalue. The second factor is showing 3.8%. Eight three uh, as the eigen value. Now, if you look at the scree plot, you see the scree plot is showing this kind of a trend. So we can say maybe three factors is fine because the elbow is happening at five, or we can even retain four, or we can retain three. But the solution that we have got is anyways a two-factor solution. Now, this, the output of this matrix, the output of this uh, EFA gives three major uh, uh, outputs. Okay, So factor matrix is the initial solution that was extracted. Okay, So it, it, you can see, read here, extraction method is principal axis factoring. There is no rotation as yet in the fact. So these are the, in, this is the initial solution. But we want to look at the rotated solution. So when we look at the rotated solution, what is the rotation method? Oblimen rotation, okay, with normalization. So now it shows that there are two dominant, two dominant factors here, two dominant factors. TO1 till LEX, these are the seven items that load onto factor one. And then there is the empowering dimension, which has the loadings here. So in your research papers, what is the matrix that you need to look at? You need to look at the pattern matrix. You need to look at the pattern uh, output, pattern matrix solution. That will give you the factor analysis result these are the loadings okay loadings on the other factor is very low similarly these are the loading for the last three items and the loadings on the first factor is very small this one it just shows the correlation so structure matrix shows the correlation of to to4 with factor 1 to4 with factor 2 and, and so on. So this is just the correlations that is being shown. You don't, the overall factor score. So the factor score that has been computed, what is the correlation of TO4 with factor 1, TO2 with factor and, and so on. So you don't need to uh, uh, look at at this time. What you need to report in research papers is this output, which is the pattern matrix output. The last one, it shows that the factor correlation, remember we have done oblique rotation, that means the factors are allowed to be correlated. So what is the correlation between factor 1 and factor 2? The correlation is 0.653. Okay, so that is the correlation between the two factors. And you see the rotated solution, it looks very nice and neat and clean. Okay, the, the diagram that I was also drawing in the earlier class or we had uh, seen it in the reading that we have. Okay, so it shows very clearly on these two factors, factor one and factor two, Okay, that the two lines are very, uh, very clearly they, they discriminate between these set of items, right? So it is, it is showing that the rotated solution is giving us a good, clean structure, which is anyways also visible from these uh, loadings.